So I think the book's A Tale of Two Cities, so A Tale of Three Wines instead. But there is disappointment. I'm pretty sure one of these wines is corked. Well, not one of them. It's the Brunello, the first wine here. So I opened that first. I'll just talk about what I had yesterday first. So Recolton, so this is the Cabernet. Talked about it in an unboxing a few times. And a really good Napa Cab just has that delicious factor. Only a little bit left. I'm going to finish it tonight. Uh, just really great, big, juicy, uh, fruit-forward, delicious wine. And then I was having a little bit of leftover lamb and leftover pork. I thought Brunello would go great. As I said, Brunello is a fantastic food wine. Uh, 2015, a great vintage out of Tuscany. And I pour this wine... And it's got a little bit of that aged color to it. It's bricking to the end. But when I smelled it, it just has that wet cardboard smell. And there's no aromas. This does not just, this doesn't smell like Sangiovese, the grape that Brunello's made from at all. I tasted it. I'll taste it one more time. Yeah, it's corked. It's absolutely corked. So that's a chemical reaction where the wine just goes bad, and there's variations. This one's definitely not drinkable. Uh, you can't enjoy this at all. This is definitely, unfortunately, going to get dumped. I will message the folks at J.J. Buckley, see if there's anything they could, can do about it, but very, very disappointed. So I then opened up, and I know I buy, I talk about this brand a lot, Arnaldo Capri, and they make the Sangrentino grape out of Umbria, which is awesome. And the wines are fantastic and big and tannic. This I found for $20, and it's the Multifolco Rosso. This is actually a Sangiovese-based wine, 70%. 15% Sangertino, 15% Merlot. So an interesting little blend there. And I did open this, and the colors are definitely fair darker than a Brunello would be. Just because of the Sangertino and the Merlot. And immediately when I smelled this, I smelled Sangiovese. And I smelled Italy. And I knew immediately that the first one was then corked. Was it a thousand percent sure? I was like, oh, maybe it needs to open up. But after going back, no. I, I don't think this can get better. I will let this sit. I'll pour a little bit more. But I don't think this is going to get better. I am about 90% sure this is, this is corked. This is very disappointing. Yeah. Oh, that actually, pouring a little extra actually made it uh, more pronounced where it has that wet cardboard, almost wet dog aroma. It's really off-putting. So, so let's try this. And how, see how it tastes? It's a really good acidity. There's not a lot of tannin, probably medium minus. On the 10 and probably even on the low, probably medium minus. Uh, decent length, medium length. It's a little warming. Alcohol's 14%, could even be higher. Even though it says 14, it does, doesn't necessarily mean it's exactly 14. There's all sorts of weird, weird rules with percentages of alcohol. And there's weird tariffs now that, that are going along with wines that are imported into the United States. So I think they're lying about some ABVs. So, for $20, so how great do I think this is? I think this is a decent wine. So, in the $20 range, when you're going to buy something that's Sangiovese heavy, you're, you're talking about Chianti. Um, Chianti, Classico, Reservas could be in the 25, 25-ish range. I believe their elegance is going to beat this. This is good, not great. So, enjoying it. I think it'll go well with my lamb and my pork, for sure. It'll be a good pairing. Would I buy this again? No, I don't think so. There's plenty of Chianti Classico Reservas, or Chianti Classico, period, that I would most certainly prefer over this for a Sangiovese-based wine. So, glad I bought it. Glad I'm trying it. I really love the producer on all the Capri. Their Sangrentinos are, to me, the best I've had to date. So, I will continuously buy those, and I have plenty of those left in my in my cellar. I mean, this is good. It, it's it's easy drinking. It's very easy drinking. I think it's because of the Merlot sort of 
uh, smooths it out a little bit. Where Sangrentino's got some bite with the tannin. But the Merlot doesn't have tannin, but it, it's got more of a plummy taste. Uh, Sangiovese can have uh, sort of a leather, can have like a leather taste, but it also has got blackberry, black cherry for sure. And then it always has sort of a, a herbal, herbal mintiness or a basil thyme type of type of flavor, which I get a lot out of Chianti. This one I'm not getting as much of that. Just this is definitely easy drinking, uh, good wine from a good producer. But this is anything else interesting on the back. Oh, it actually says with light tannins, and I, and I would definitely agree. The tannins, I think that's where I'm, I'm a little disappointed. Not disappointed. I, I like a little more tannin and grip in my wine. I, I like a little bit of that mouth puckering tannin from the grape skin. And with Sangrentino in here and Merlot, I thought maybe it would have a little more of that. And it, and it doesn't, which is surprising. It just might be the way they macerate. They probably don't do it too long uh, on the on the skins. But, good wine nonetheless. So, that's it for tonight. I will look at the corked wine just one more time. Oh, oh, that is now worse. Oh my, that has like a sulfur smell now too. Uh, that's terrible. That smells terrible. I'm almost tempted to drink it. I don't know. I'll try. Mm. Oh, that's awful. Oh, that's really corked. Okay, so, especially now that I'm drinking a real wine, that is absolutely horrid and corked, and I will be messaging my guy James Katz from from JJ Buckley. There's a record ton. I'm just going to drop a, drop a little bit in the glass, just so you can see the color. I mean, super abstracted super dark and I mean it, it really really bright dark ruby red I mean the aroma is so so different I mean it just screams it screams California it screams Napa it really really does just so big and juicy smelling and fruity it, but it's in a good way it's got I wouldn't call it elegance but it's delicious and it's well made it's absolutely well made. So when I did those very inexpensive cab tastings, they were awful. I think this is, I think I got this for 20 and I've never seen this bottle anywhere ever. And I don't even remember what, so James will put out the email once a day, you know, here's this wine, here's the PCP, which is a private client price. So they might list it on the website for $35, $40. And then we get a PCP of 28. And which is awesome. So then I'll buy one or two, typically one or two, one or two. That's my normal. Sometimes three, not often. And depending if a wine is super special, I'll buy more. I've bought from him. I think on two occasions a case of wine. So those were special wines. One was a inexpensive Bordeaux, and one was an amazing Washington Red that I still have some left. The Pirouette, which is just an awesome, awesome made wine. It's made. To be Bordeaux-ish, but out of Washington State with a, with a rock star winemaker, Philip Milka. So, delicious. Just delicious. What can you say? You know, I don't gravitate towards Napa as much. I think this is a place that really grabs the beginner wine drinker. It's very easy to know. This is Cabernet Sauvignon. If you look at Brunello, it doesn't say the grape on there anywhere. You have to know it's Sangiovese. It's 100% Sangiovese. When you look at this, I mean, this does say it on the back, but if you're just looking at the front, would, would you buy Montefalco, Rus, Rus, R, Montefalco Rosso from Umbria? No, probably not. Probably not. You look on the back and it gives you the three grapes, but again, Sangiovese, do you even, people don't even know Sangrentino. I've only known Sangrentino for, for a short amount of time. So, that's it. I'm going to have some dinner. I'm going to have it with the Montefalco. Probably have a little bit of cheese and the Riccolton after for a little bit of dessert. And we'll see what happens with this Brunello. Super disappointed. I really, really uh, was in the mood for, for that wine or a Brunello. And I've never had that brand. I, I think I have either another bottle of that 
or another vintage of that of that producer. Let's hope it's also not corked. This is the first corked wine I've ever got from J.J. Buckley. I've had plenty of corked wines. Uh, not too, too many. I think the percentage used to be like 5% of wines were corked. Now it's much less. With all the precautions they take in the wineries now, there's a lot less of, of a cork taint. So they call it a cork, but cork taint. And I forget the three letters, the, the scientific, the chemicals. Yeah, I don't remember. But, so, we'll see what happens. Dinner time. Enjoy your night. Thank you. Good night.